In this video, I want to talk a little bit about acoustic pianos and compare them with digital pianos. This is my John Broadwood and Sons upright piano. Bought it six years ago, cost me about £200. And I'm moving to a new place, but sadly, it won't be coming with me, so it's reached the end of its life. Let's take a look inside. Says Grand Prix Paris, 1900, and the serial number is 106603. So this piano is at least 120 years old. Anyway, I went to some music shops and tried the digital pianos, and I found that the touch is completely different to what I get on this. With the digital pianos, the touch is uh, takes more effort to play. With this, it's pretty soft. In fact, if I use a zippo lighter, then I can weigh down the key. Right, so under. Okay. That's how light it is. I was told that with old pianos, because they've been played for such a long time, the touch it gets softer. If we just talk about forte pianos, which are the precursor to the modern piano, I've never actually tried one. But I've read that they, they were a lot lighter than today's uh, pianos. So if you've never listened to music played on a forte, forte piano, I would really recommend it. It's quite interesting. Um, there's some characteristics that it's got which modern pianos have just lost over time. So I'll put some audio examples at the end of the video. So with an acoustic piano, the touch comes from the mechanism that you're using and you're actually moving a series of hammers. So with the lower notes, the hammers are bigger, and with the higher notes, the hammers are smaller. So this one is a higher pitch, and this one is a lower pitch. And digital pianos actually replicate this, supposedly. They use weighted keys, but the keys are weighted more at the bottom, less at the top. But I actually, I never noticed this effect when I was playing pianos. Maybe it's because I'm used to it, but there you go. If you look at the keys themselves, just pull it up. That's the low one, the mid one, and the high one. The keys aren't actually straight, they're at an angle corresponding to where they are on the keyboard. So that one's quite straight. And that one again, it's sort of bending. Can't really see it. But anyway, the keys are made of wood for an acoustic piano and um, coated with ivory. Modern pianos tend to use some sort of plastic, so the feeling's a bit different. Next thing is the actual size of the key. So with an acoustic piano, the key is a lot longer. It's not just what you see, but it stretches into the back and you've got the pivot point here. So the force you put pressed here and the force is exerted on here. So I suppose it I suppose it minimizes the amount of effort you need to play. With a typical digital piano, um, the key is just what you see and the pivot point is at the back of this. So you're acting, the force is acting on here, so that takes a bit more effort. Talking about sound now, a digital piano has one or two sources of sound. And these are the speakers. For an acoustic piano, every string is a source of sound. And because you've got more than one, you've got lots of them, they can interact with each other and you get what's known as harmonics. So if I sound... That key doesn't work. If I sound one note, then... Notes that are similar to it will um, resonate. Yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, but... It's just a sound phenomenon. And with the piano, you've got the soundboard, which picks up the sound behind the strings. So 
the whole instrument is emitting sound, so it travels through the walls, through the doors, pisses off your neighbours, maybe. Uh, it depends how good you are. But with the digital piano, again, the speakers, that's what gives you the sound, so it's not as... Uh, the sound isn't as pervasive as with the digital piano. But then it's not as immersive, it's a, it's a different experience. If we take a look at the bottom of the piano, you can actually remove this board here. I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. There we go. And you can get access to the strings at the bottom if you really feel like it. And if you've broken strings like I have, all gone, then you'll find them at the bottom here rattling away. But I have pulled them up just yesterday. And they look like this. Very thick things. If you ever need to choke someone, then find a piano string. <laughs> now the piano strings themselves you get single strings for the bass notes. They're very thick. And then you get three notes, sorry, three strings for the high notes. And generally the midsection is either two or three strings, so all the strings that I've snapped are in the bass because they're the single ones. I suppose having three strings makes them more resistant to snapping. I'm not sure, but that's my theory. Talking about the pedal now, uh, we have the sustain pedal, which in an acoustic piano, it moves a set of dampers away from the strings or closer to them. And you also have, well, you just get pedal noise just by pressing it. You can hear the sort of echo inside. You can get interesting effects using the pedal as well on acoustic because if you vary the pressure very finely, very carefully, uh, you can have it so that the dampers just about touch the strings and you'll get a kind of resonance or twang effect. It's hard to explain, but I'll try and show you. You can hear a sort of metallic sound at the end. I'll try a few chords. So when you're playing a typical digital piano and you let go of the pedal, the sound, you don't get this interesting resonance effect, the sound just fades out, it gets quieter, there's no interaction. So acoustic sounds, yeah, you can do it quickly, or you can do it slowly. And you can hear each string actually cutting out. Going back to the strings, you can see that they wear out the hammers on an acoustic piano, so the more it's being used, the more the hammers will be worn out. So let me see. Yeah, they indent it slightly. If you look at the hammers, you'll see the grooves made by the strings. I've read that the quality uh, becomes worse after this, after the ha hammers become uh, worn in, but I'll let you be the judge. So because an acoustic piano is a physical thing, the sound is produced physically, we can um, affect it in interesting ways. So we can put something between the hammers and the strings to get a kind of muted effect. Let's see if I can do it with the scars. I just want to show the effect.
demonstration, but I hope you can see the difference. So now I'll just uh, play some things on my piano and play the same things on whatever digital piano I get and can compare it, I suppose. Whatever. Some of these keys don't work. So this is a Kawaii KDP 110, bought it for six or seven hundred pounds, so it's affordable for a digital piano and I found it wasn't as heavy as, the touch wasn't as heavy as the other brands and the sounds are alright, so here's the main piano sound. sound after that which is I guess the same but with reverb and then you have a softer piano sound it's quite useful and so on 
And then the other the last piano patch is a sort of electric piano. <laughs> the speakers are, they do the job I guess, nothing compared to a real piano, but you could turn it up loud if you wanted to. And next, just the other generic electronic organ and stuff. Oh. Very casual. Your elevator has arrived. And some strings. So strings are actually quite useful for exploring uh, textures like the sort of feeling of chords because strings got a different chord to the piano obviously but when you're trying to figure out chord progressions and stuff you can try the string patch and that make a difference. So I'll give you an example for Ninth Symphony, Third Movement. remember it anymore but there you go. Um what else can I talk about? I think that's it really. No. So there's an app available which lets you change piano settings such as the temperament, the brightness and all those sorts of things like a virtual technician. In fact I think that's what it's called but it's only available on iPad, so if you're one of the lucky few who has an iPad, then you're in luck. But if you're like me and you don't, then you can't you can't do that much. Anyway, so this piano offers the ability to play two sounds at the same time. So you think that's the main piano patch, and I think this one Harps the chord, so you can combine them. It's a bit harsh. And then you can reduce, sorry, change the balance between them. She sounds like a fuzzy piano. Eighties, nineties patches. to store three songs so it's a bit of a weird one the songs can be ridiculously long I think I mean you could probably record a sonata but you could only you can only record three different songs 
and I've made the mistake of <laughs> overwriting my songs countless times, but it's a useful feature. piano like I just I just pushed the box up my stairs and then spent a few hours screwing it together the piano though it's not the box and and then I found my screwdriver it was fucking up the frets and the screws which led to a bit of frustration but everything worked out in the end obviously try not to get water on it because that will ruin it if you are using a real piano then obviously it's not ideal but if you get water on it it's not gonna ruin anything so just be careful with that and there you have it something which is really useful about this piano is that it has a inbuilt lid Ta -da. So these things get very dusty and you don't realise it, so if you've got a piano without a lid then you're going to get dust in the keys and that's not, it's not ideal, especially because you can't exactly take it apart for maintenance. So get a cover on there, keeps it safe, keeps it looking good, it's a real bonus for this piano.
Thank you.